Why Narcissistic Parents Hate Empaths Hey there, everyone. It's great to have you back on the channel. Today, I want to delve into a topic that many of you might resonate with. Why narcissistic parents, or even just one parent, often harbor disdain for empaths like us. As empaths, we face unique challenges, and I want to shed some light on those struggles today. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss out on our latest content. And if you find this video helpful or insightful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with others who might benefit from it. Now let's dive into why narcissistic parents tend to have a difficult relationship with empaths like us. The narcissistic parent has a complicated relationship with the empath. On one hand, they despise the empath's emotions because it's messy and bothersome to them. But on the other hand, they need the empath because they want to borrow some of their emotional self. They're attracted to the empath's ability to feel because narcissists themselves struggle with emotional interactions. They don't know how to express genuine emotions, so they observe and copy others. For example, at a funeral, they might say the right things not because they genuinely feel or believe them, but because they've seen others do it and they mimic that behavior. It's not coming from an authentic place within them. It's just a learned response to fit in socially. Narcissists feel jealous of empaths for several reasons. One biggie is that empaths are more at ease with their emotions, while narcissists struggle with this big time. They have a limited range of genuine feelings, and often, they're not in touch with deeper stuff like shame. Compared to them, we empaths might seem like easy targets for manipulation. The narcissist sees us as weak because, in their twisted view, being in touch with our feelings equals being weak. It's like their golden rule. If you're all about feelings, you're weak sauce unless you're making a big drama out of it. Then, somehow, that's fine. But for the rest of us who feel deeply, it's always, why are you so sensitive? Well, maybe because their behavior is seriously not cool. As empaths, we tend to wear our hearts on our sleeves and sometimes our emotions steer the ship instead of just riding shotgun. But growing up in a toxic, narcissistic family messes with that balance. We end up letting our feelings drive the car more often than they should, blending our emotions with our thoughts. That's not ideal because real maturity means separating feelings and thoughts so we can think clearly and feel deeply without them constantly crashing into each other. As empaths, we're not down for being under the thumb of a narcissistic parent. We feel that control and manipulation, and it's like, no thanks, but breaking free isn't easy. We're all about setting boundaries, but actually doing it? That's tough. Another reason narcissistic parents can't stand empaths is because we bring on this cycle of conflict. We empathizers are all about helping, but the narcissist is all about control. We try to lend a hand, they want us to meet their needs and stroke their ego, but giving back? Not in their playbook. It's like they're saying, your job is to focus on me, me, me. Whether I return the favor? Not my problem. And so the conflict merry-go-round spins on between us empaths and the narcissists. Growing up in an environment like that, what's the takeaway? We end up thinking we're only valuable for our empathetic nature. It's like, if I'm good at empathizing, then I have some worth, even though that's kind of a codependent way to look at it. Our ability to understand emotions and connect with others is seen as a flaw, like we're weak or naive. And sadly, growing up in a narcissistic household, we might start to believe it. We internalize this idea that we're just meant to be used, that we're weaklings, immature, and easy to fool. Another thing is, we're often expected to do too much and feel too deeply. It's like we're supposed to be the emotional superheroes in relationships. But we've got to watch out for these patterns and be aware of them. See, when we're always over-empathizing, it's a sign that maybe we're not giving ourselves enough empathy. When we go overboard on something, it's usually at our own expense. Take falling in love, for example. If we're head over heels for someone who doesn't feel the same, we end up giving more love than we receive. And guess who's left feeling empty? Yup us. So, when we overextend ourselves, we're taking away from our own well-being. That's where internal boundaries come in. It's about creating a space for ourselves, a sense of wholeness where we don't rely on others to feel okay. 
Sure, we care about people, we love them, we respect them, but our inner world is off limits. That's ours to manage. We need to build up those internal boundaries and learn to detach a bit. It's like saying, I care about you, but I don't need you to complete me. I'm good on my own. And for us empaths, practicing self-care is crucial. But let's be real. It's not something we excel at. We're so focused on feeling everything that we forget to take care of ourselves. Feeling a lot doesn't automatically mean we're looking out for ourselves. It's about finding that balance between empathy for others and self-care. And that's something we need to work on. As empaths, it's important to distinguish between the feelings imposed on us by our family dynamics and our own genuine emotions. See, growing up in a dysfunctional family, we're taught certain feelings we're supposed to have based on how we're treated or what we're told. Like, if dad always called us a loser, we're expected to feel shame. But that shame isn't our true feeling. It's what the system wants us to feel. Now, if we genuinely hurt a friend and feel ashamed, that's different. That's a healthy response to our actions. But when our feelings are manipulated by someone else's words or actions, that's the system's doing. It's like we're programmed to feel a certain way based on what others say or do to us. So, what can we do about it? We need to recognize these system-induced feelings and work on changing them. We can't let our emotions be controlled by someone else's narrative. If you found this helpful, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you're really interested in diving deeper, check out the online program linked in the description below. Thanks for tuning in today. Take care and stay mindful.